Our next speaker is Madam Nazreen. She's here to share with us more about her journey and fight against myeloma. Can we give her a round of applause, please? Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> Sorry, I get a bit cough. <clears throat> yeah, my name is Nasrin Ismail. I just done my treatment for the past two years. I had um, myeloma, and um, it's a very tough for me to share my story. Actually, um, honestly, I'm very nervous today. I'm so sorry about it. <clears throat> so <clears throat> it was on um, 2015, it's on the 6th of March. I only had like a back pain on my back, and I doesn't, doesn't know that I had a myeloma on that moment. So my family members uh, was look at me, I was quite serious on my, my symptom on that stage, on, on, on me, I mean on that moment. Uh, they sent me to SGH because on that time I can't walk. I was on the bed all the while, and my family members be helping me for my shower and uh, carry me up on the bed. And I thought it's just a normal sickness I have on my back ache. So, but I doesn't know. So when I've been rushed to hospital in emergency, um, they push me in the ward. Everything. On the next day. I met Dr. Satis, my previous doctor. On that moment, I can say that my tears is never dry. And I really couldn't, couldn't believe that I have such a pain and quite a very, very, very critical on that moment. I can't do anything on that time. I only based on that moment that, that I, will live, I, I will no more longer live in this world. So when Dr. Satis came and looked at me, and he was saying that I have to do my bone marrow for the first treatment. So I asked him, I don't know what is myeloma on that moment. I don't know what is cancer on that time. So when I go through on my bone marrow on the next day, this is my first time treatment doing my bone marrow. It's really hard for me to accept. And I done my MRI on the same day. I was quite tired the whole entire day. I've been pushing to MRI department, to my X-ray department, but they cannot detect any of my sickness on that moment. But I keep crying and crying. I say I cannot stand the pain. The pain is really killing my back. Even though I can't move my body left and right. It's just like a dead body on that moment. It's myself. So when the result came on, about few days, I think you're not wrong. Exactly on my date of birth is my 50th birthday. Dr. Satis came in the ward and was telling me that it's not actually a birthday present, but um, tell me to be calm and relaxed to accept what you're going to tell me. I say, before you're going to tell me anything, I can feel myself that I'm a cancer patient. Then he said, yes. So he asked me to be more brave and don't think much. Don't think that you are dying. Don't think anything. Always think that you always have to be more positive on your life. So on that stage, I said, OK, carry on with the treatment. So I done with the treatment uh, about three weeks in hospital. I was on the bed. The nurses punched me, everything. Uh, even though I can't walk. So Dr. Satis was worried about me on that moment. And I keep asking him, can I walk? Because I just on the bed for the past three weeks. I said, I'm scared. I said that. I'm scared I can't walk anymore. I, can't, I said that I'm scared that I won't be to be like a normal person. He said, you don't worry. This is upon myself. I have to be fight for it. And Dr. Satis said, always been telling me that I'm a doctor and you have to pray hard for it. So he's, he's a part of being helping me all the while. So I say, OK. So all I go through the treatments that I was three weeks in the ward, I've been discharged again. So I started my chemo. In the ward, at the same time, I was in chemo. But my chemo is not that strong. 
My chemotherapy is not that strong at that moment. So when I've been discharged, I have to go for my chemotherapy every uh, three weeks, every week, twice, twice in a week, for the past about four months, four to five months, if I'm not wrong. So on the August, I went for my cell transplant. And I was very, very scared. Then, because I, I, I never go through all these things, and she said, Nazrin, don't be scared. You have to be more strong. I know you can do it. I said, Dr. Satis, doing all this transplant is not easy, easy for me to accept. When I see some patient that what they go through, they're sharing their experience on me. When I look at them, when they told me they're sorry, I feel so scared all that time. And my tears were never dry. I keep crying all the days. And when I reach home, all the side effects I have from my chemo is from my back. I can't sleep the whole entire night for the past few months. And my back is really aching, it's very, very strong. I still like sometimes I get mad on myself, I get angry on my own. Sometimes I tell myself why wow, I can't be like a normal person back. But my support from my family said you have to be more patient. Just, just don't think anything, just like feel like you are just a normal person. But I said I can't. The tears keep going down every day and, it, and the fear is always come to me. It's always the fear is always come to me. So when I done, I said, okay, I have to do your, your cell transplant. Okay. I said that. But he told me that on your cell transplant you have to, the chemotherapy will be double dose. Okay? And um, he said it will help you let the cells grow and easy for them to, to do the cell transplant. I said, is it very dangerous for me? He said, no, Nazrin. I know you can do it. I said, okay. So I go through my cell transplant. I was in the ward about three weeks. Okay, they, the, they make a plug on my neck. And um, okay, everything was success. So they've been collected my cells from, uh, it's about eight millions. Okay, so after I've been discharged everything, I have to go back again for my chemotherapy for two months. For two months for every week. Before, my last treatment is my transplant. If you talk about the oral medication, to me, it's just like having my breakfast every day, day and night, day and night. And then before my chemotherapy, I have to take half an hour before my chemotherapy, I have to take about 15 tablets before my chemotherapy started. I said, okay. So what I've been, uh, been concerned for my doctor, I never said no to, to my doctors. I always said yes and yes and yes. Even though what happened to me, I can't walk, I was on my wheelchair, my family members was carrying me. I still go to the hospital without fail. So he said, Nazrin, okay, this is your last treatment for your transplant. And I was very worried about my transplant. I was very, very scared. The fear come back to me again. I always said, Dr. Satis, on that moment, I said no. He said, no, Nazrin. This is your last treatment, you have to go for it. If you said no, I will never say anything to you. So you've done everything out for the past about a year. So this is your last treatment. So before I done my last treatment on my transplant, there will be, he told me about be about three dose of chemotherapy on me. And um, it's quite strong and have to be very, very strong on the stage. This is my new hair, actually. I've been lost my hair twice. Yeah. So, um, when before I started my transplant, the last transplant, I confronted Dr. Satis by personal. He was telling me, okay, Nazrin, now what you want to say, what you want to lay out, please, by all means, just lay out everything, fear, everything inside my heart, just tell him. So I really do that. I mean, I talk to him by personally, I just like a small baby crying because I'm very, very scared on that, on that moment, really scared. So he convinced me with support, with his support. He said, don't worry, I know you can do it. 
So when I think the other way around for my for myself, and I want to be back like a normal person again, I go through for my trans last transplant. And to be very honest with you, when I had my last transplant, it's like it's I think it will be a double fear for me. It's really, really very, very fear for me. I have to do everything with the triple dose chemotherapy. And my body is very weak. I have no appetite. And I can't do anything. But I thanks a lot with the nurses and the doctors on that moment. Was always keep being looking at me in the ward. Every 15 minutes they came to the to my room and check on me. And on that stage, I think if I'm not wrong, my palate, my potassium was really going down very, very low. And a lot of people said that doing the transplant, our life is about 50-50. And with support from my family and support from the doctors and the nurses, I think I shouldn't listen to anybody. It's myself. In my own heart and my own sincere that, okay, I go through all the treatments. When doing the trust transplant, honestly, tears again will never stop. I was keep crying all the while, keep crying with one of the doctors, the nurses. I always tell, I always ask them, "Am I dying? Am I dying?" They said, "No." Because the last transplant, to be very honestly, is very very tough. It's not simple as some patient that. They can really do the transplant. Some of the patients that I met, they doesn't want to do the, the, the transplant at all. But when they look at me, I said, no, you have to go for it. We have to fight. We have to fight for our cancer. We cannot rely on everybody. Support is from our own and love is from our own. So I thank God. I did go through the transplant. And um, it's about three, three to four weeks I was in the ward. I came out, I rest about three weeks, but I have to, see for my, I have to go for my follow-up checkup every week in with Dr. Satis. And after that, after three months done, I have to come back for my chemotherapy for two months again. And I never skip either one of the treatments in the hospital, no matter what happened to me. I never skip, not even a day. And my journey is quite far actually from from, uh, from hospital to my house. But I always tell myself that I want to be strong. I want to be back to normal life. And what chemotherapy has, has on me, is on my body for quite some time. Then always people was be asking me, is, is the chemotherapy is pain? Is the chemotherapy is dead? I said, no, chemotherapy is not pain. It is not pain at all. Only the side effect that you have on the chemotherapy is like partly maybe of your, uh, maybe like a bone, a bone aching. Uh, maybe you feel uncomfortable, not like, like a normal person actually. Um, I think that much that I go through on my chemotherapy. And um, after that on my uh, chemo, after two, 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 two months, yeah, I have to go for my another bone marrow transplant. And I think, I know, when doing the bone marrow transplant, it's not that easy also. It's the same thing, the tears will never dry. I have to, I have to be like, I have to be that a normal person, when I, I done my bone marrow, I just ignore the pain, I just ignore everything. And I always assume myself that I go to SGH to meet my doctors, my nurses, my friends there. It's like, I went to the shopping mall. And I never think that I go to GH is I'm I'm a sick I'm a sick person, I'm a cancer patient, no. So I have to be very strong on it. Really, really to be strong. If I don't have that strong, I have to be, I have to think about my family members also. See? And I then also my bone marrow last is okay. And I went for my PET scan. And I thank God. What I go through on my, my myeloma, and the result came, everything is good. I can say that my myeloma may be not even the 1% now. Okay? 
And after Dr. Sati left, he went to another hospital. So in charge of me now is Dr. Mauli, been looking after me now. And here I am. I have to be more cheerful to you all. And I hope, please, the fear that we have in our, 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 our life, ourselves, we just throw aside. Just be cheerful to yourself and don't think that cancer will make us die. No. And I really hope that maybe some of my friends said that they haven't got any transplant or whatever. You don't be scared and be more positive. If I can stand here right in front of everybody here, so why don't you be like me? I think nothing much to say. That is my true experience. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madam Nazreen.